All right, now that we have covered tenses, articles, and plurals, it's time to move into the last part of this lesson, and we'll talk about active voice, passive voice, and we'll talk about first person, second person, and third person. All right, so what is active voice and what is passive voice? What does that mean? So active voice or passive voice is determined by the verbs that are used. Active voice emphasizes who is doing the action. And that's what we call the agent. Whereas passive voice emphasizes the receiver or the what or who the action is being done to. So we're either going to emphasize the agent or the receiver. So here are some examples. I wrote a manuscript for publication. So wrote is an active verb and it's emphasizing I. I wrote. So I did this. I am the agent and the action I took was I wrote. Now, if I wanted to change that sentence to the passive voice, I would say a manuscript was written for publication. Who wrote the manuscript? It doesn't say. If we just read that sentence by itself, you could assume it was written by the author, or you could assume that the author is referring to someone else who wrote the publication. Uh, but the point is, the agent is minimized, right? The agent is subordinated. We don't really know anything about the agent. What we know about is the manuscript. Now let's look at some scientific writing sentence examples. A draft of A. mellifera genome sequence was published in 2004. That's the passive way to write that sentence. So we see the receiver, uh, that's the draft genome sequence. The action was somebody published it. So someone did something to that genome sequence, which was published. Now the active way to write this is we published a draft of a mellifera genome sequence in 2004. Or it could name a person. Uh, Group X published a draft of a mellifera genome sequence in 2004. That's active. So now that you know what passive voice and active voice are, when you want to emphasize the agent, use the active voice. And when you want to emphasize the, uh, the thing that's being done to, then use the passive voice. So for example, when you're writing materials and methods, you want to emphasize the materials, you want to emphasize the methods, not the person doing experiments. So you write in the passive voice. So maybe in the introduction, when you're giving the background information, you might want to emphasize that you were the group that discovered this background information. And so you would use the active voice. And in later lessons, we'll talk in more detail about situations where the passive voice is preferred or the active voice is preferred. Now let's talk about grammatical person and point of view. So this is first person, second person, third person. What do those terms mean? First person is when the writer is speaking about the writer's own actions. And so they'll use words like I, me, mine, we, or our. Second person is when the writer is speaking directly to the reader, and they'll use words like you, your, or yours. So they're giving you instructions. Third person is when the writer is speaking to the reader about a person or thing that is not involved in the conversation. And so they'll use things like he, she, they, them, it, or maybe no pronoun at all. So what do you think most scientific writing is going to use? First person, second person, or third person? Are, are some of these rarely used? Are some of them frequently used? All right, here are some examples. In the study, we used RNA-seq to investigate gene expression, splice variants, TSSs, and differential promoter usage in honeybees. So this is a first person and second person. The same sentence would say, you can use RNA-seq to investigate gene expression, splice variants, TSSs, and different promoter usage in honeybees. So if the authors wanted to refer to themselves in the third person, they could do that in this way. In this study, the authors used RNA-seq to investigate gene expression, splice variants, TSSs, and differential promoter usage in honeybees. That's pretty unusual and it's awkward. Usually they would, you would write in a third person point of view without referring to the agent at all. 
So, for example, in this study, RNA-seq was used to investigate gene expression, splice variances, TSSs, and differential promoter usage in honeybees. So, four different ways we could use grammatical person and point of view. Which ones are the most common in scientific writing? So, if you said the first and the last, I agree with you. So I would recommend against using second person, third person referring to the agent. And I would also recommend against referring to yourself in the third person. So most of the time you're going to use either the structure that's in the first sentence or the fourth sentence. Okay, so as we wrap up this lesson, we've covered a lot of material, but I'd just like to look at the learning outcomes for this lesson. And that's going to give you an idea of how to spend your time practicing putting this information into use. So again, the learning outcomes for this lesson were to list and define the parts of speech, to be able to classify words of a sentence into parts of speech, identify the subject of a sentence, identify the main verb in a sentence, explain when to use past, present, and future tense, be able to use singular and plural nouns and verbs appropriately, be able to define passive voice and active voice and explain when to use them, and be able to define first, second, and third person and know which ones to use. So that concludes this lesson. Uh, go out, put it into practice, uh, work on your worksheets, take the quiz, and when you feel like you have mastered this material, then you're ready to move on to the next lesson. All right. In the meantime, keep writing every day. And as you do, happy writing.